Network audio adapters, NAAs for short, are becoming more popular by the day. Why? Well, let me explain and in the process review the SOTM version. Almost everyone today is aware that a hard disk is a far better medium to store music on than an optical disk like the CD, DVD or Blu-ray. The problem with a hard disk is that it always has to be controlled by a computer. And computers are noisy devices. If you think you are more clever and use a NAS instead, that's a computer too. Just like your dedicated streamer and even a CD player. Of course, in dedicated audio equipment a lot of care is taken to prevent the computer part of the device to pollute the audio part. But that can only be done by quality materials and components and that always turns out to be costly. What if we just use a computer that is fast enough to handle the library functions and the streaming of the audio? Then Connect that asynchronously to a device that is completely galvanically separated. That device can then clock and shape the signal optimally and send it to a DAC. Well, that is like what the Sonora Micro Rendu I reviewed and the SOTM SMS 200 reviewed here do. Although not as small as the Micro Rendu, the SMS 200 still is very small, measuring 106 by 152 by 48 mm. The sturdy and nicely designed front only holds two LEDs, one for power and one for network activities. The rear contains an 8P 8C network connector, a micro SD slot holding the boot image, two USB A connectors for storage media, one USB A dedicated to and optimized for audio and a power inlet for the supplied 9V DC 2A switching mode power supply. A recessed reset button completes the tour of the rear. I rarely ever describe the bottom of a device but in this case I have to mention the feet made of rather soft rubbery like substance that seems to mechanically decouple the device from the surface it is placed on. You have to connect the SMS 200 to the network, the USB DAC and the power supply and wait some time for the device to boot. Wi-Fi is not built in, something I totally agree on. The next thing you have to do is to start a browser on your computer, tablet or smartphone and type unasu.local if I pronounce that right. If all is well, a sky with many stars shows up. It appears that Yunasu is Korean for River of Silver Stars with six icons in front of it. The sixth icon contains the options for the system setup, update and so on. The other five icons activate each another mode. Rune Ready, Squeeze Light, MPD and DNA, HQ Player NAA and SharePoint. Rune Ready will make the SMS 200 a certified Rune endpoint. Squeezelite is the Squeezebox emulator that is great when you have a Squeezebox network and want to increase the audio quality. Not only does it handle all sampling rates, since the hardware is more modern and costly than a Squeezebox, it is likely to sound better at lowering sampling rates too. MPD and DLNA makes the SMS2 a standalone DLNA player. MPD stands for Music Player Daemon, a popular Linux music player. You can even connect a hard disk containing music to one of the two USB inputs and use a MPD or DLA controller app on your tablet or smartphone to play the music from that hard disk. You could also use, for instance, J River Media Center to send music to the SMS 200. HQ Player NAA is comparable to the Rune version but then suited for the upsampling software by Signalist. SharePoint is an Apple AirPlay compatible player. It is the only mode that is restricted to 16 bit 48 kHz simply because of the AirPlay standard. The other modes are capable of handling high res up to 32 bit 384 kHz and DSD 256. 
It looks a lot like the software on the Micro Rendu. As I understand it is based on the same Sonic Orbiter software by a small green computer. But there is one difference. Before you activate a mode make sure to first confirm what DAC should be used since it doesn't automatically select the connected DAC. As always you can skip the tag by going to the timecode above. Although this time there is not that much tag. For although it is easy to open the cabinet, all chips are covered by cooling profiles. Remarkable is the power filter circuits on a separate board. The network adapter on a review sample was set to 100 megabits per second. Probably this was chosen since 100 megabits per second is quieter than a gigabit per second and 100 megabits per second is fast enough for audio. Unfortunately, this didn't work perfectly with 1 gigabit routers, as I found out. And who has a 100 megabit router still lying around, not me. Anyway, it was a simple matter of removing a small SMD capacitor to make it a 1 gigabit network adapter, as is explained on the SOTM side. Current production is set by default to 1 gigabit per second. Since I used the Micro Rendu as a standard in my set 1, replacing it by the SMS 200 is a direct confrontation between the two. And the Micro Rendu won that one hands down. More detail, less stress, cleaner S sounds, in one word less digital. But then I realized that the Micro Rendu came without a power supply and that I use it with the, with the S Booster BOTW PMP Eco. They really have to change that name. <laughs> and that it would be nothing more than fair to also use an S Booster supply for the SOTM. This time a 9V version was needed, but further it was identical. And right away the Micro Rendu was overtaken by the SOTM. Now, don't get me wrong. The Micro Rendu is an extremely good network audio adapter, especially when used with such an excellent power supply. But Jesus of Sonora already said they were working on even a better version and that becomes a necessity now since the SOTM really sounds just a tad better while the price is lower. The sound is even more relaxed and open in the mid range and also the lows are better controlled and well I was going to say less muffled but that might give the impression that the Micro Rendu does sound muffled, which isn't the case. It only is when compared with the SMS 200 with the S Booster power supply. Is it that good? Yes it is. And those who say that all USB outputs sound the same, go to a good hi-fi shop and have a comparison between the USB output of any computer and either the Micro Rendu or the SMS 200 both fed by a quality power supply like the S Booster and using the same source and player software. You will either be surprised or deaf. The SMS 200 costs 549 euros in my country and that's including 21% sales tax or VAT. The US price according to the SOTM side is $510 and that's excluding sales tax I suppose. It comes with a wallboard switching mode power supply that is good enough to help you through the summer but in the end you want a proper power supply for it, it makes a hefty difference. The Micro Rendu will set you back 640 euros. I only have the US price and that is excluding a power supply. Now would I replace my Micro Rendu with the SMS 200? Yes I would and I probably will but that also has to do with my profession. As a consumer I could perfectly live with the Micro Rendu for and I stress it again it is a very good device. But if you are planning on buying a networked audio adapter then go for the SOTM SMS 200 with S Booster. In my country Wi-Fi Media.nl offers the S Booster at an extra 200 euros when you buy the SMS 200 at the same time. In the meantime I'll wait for the Sonori 
or someone else to come up with yet another improvement. Nothing surprises me anymore. So subscribe to this channel or follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. And you can also post questions, but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my questions video to find out why. You'll find more info information below this video and if you like this video, please support the channel and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>